if you can't read this problem, don't worry, I'll read it to you. But um, it's a problem about modeling a situation with trig functions. In the first paragraph, we're told at 11.55 p.m., Thomas ties a weight to the middle hand of a clock, the clockwise torque applied by the weight, i.e. the force it applies on the clock's hand to move clockwise, varies in a periodic way that can be modeled by a trigonometric function. So that tells us that we are going to use a sine or cosine wave here. The torque peaks 15 minutes after each whole hour. So we have a peak 15 minutes after each whole hour when the minute hand is pointing directly to the right at 3 newton meters. So our peak is at 3. The minimum is at negative 3 and that occurs 15 minutes before each whole hour when the minute hand is pointing to the left. Find the formula of the trig function that models the torque, looks like the tau symbol, applied by the weight t minutes after Thomas attached the weight. Define the function using radians. So maybe pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll solve it together. All right, so we've got to unpack this problem. And usually, for me, that requires some kind of sketching or just writing things down to process what I'm reading. I, I have to reflect here that they say it peaks 15 minutes after each whole hour and is at a minimum 15 minutes before each whole hour. So before, I'm going to choose 11.45. I choose that because it's close to 11.55 p.m. So 11.45, we know we're at negative 3. That's a minimum. But then at 12.15, we're again at a maximum. That's 15 minutes after, I guess, midnight in this case. We're at 3. And then when will it go back down to the minimum? It'll go back down at 12.45. And that's at negative 3, and so on and so forth. Then, from this, I can see what the period will be. The period is going to go from this minimum over to this minimum right here. And that means our period is happening every hour. Period equals 60 minutes, right? It takes 60 minutes to go from one minimum to the other. Remember, that's the way the period works. You go from one max to a max or a min to a min. Okay, so that's our period. And if we sketch this thing out, we can see clearly what the midline amplitude would be. You know, you'll need to sketch it. I recommend sketching because that will help you decide if you want to model this using sine or cosine. So right here, um, the tricky part, one, I mean, one of the many tricky parts, is that they're telling us that uh, the whole process started at 11.55. So that is our zero point, 11.55 p.m. So then I'm going to mark here because I know what happens at 11.45, 10 minutes before, so negative 10, 10 minutes before 11.55, that's at a height of negative 3. Okay, so I can mark that. All right, there it is at negative 3. And then I know that at 12.15, so that's 20 minutes after 11.55, I know that that's going to be up at positive 3. Oops. Positive 3. 1, 2, 3. And notice it's, it's a rough sketch. I'm not being precise here because that would take too much time, right? You really want to just model this problem loosely. And then at 12.45, that's uh, 50 minutes after 11.55. So 30, 40, 50, we are back at a minimum here. So our wave is something like this. Now... You, I like to work with whatever data I'm given. I don't like to give myself extra work. And I'm given this minimum, and I know this minimum is, at, is happening here as well. I know my period. I know my midline is at zero. It's halfway between three and negative three. I know my amplitude is three. That's the distance from a peak to the midline. So the only thing I want to think about is my phase shift. For the phase shift here, I notice that um, this point, I can work with this point. And I can work with this one too, as well, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to use the 20 though, just that's what caught my eye. So I noticed that if I took, let's see if I can get this to work. I'll draw over this. Alright, so if I drag that drawing over here, that looks a lot like a cosine wave, right? It comes down, and this back up, right? So if I had a cosine wave here, if I just wrote down, that's right. So for this wave right here, I should use blue. Um, for this wave right here, should color code a little bit. I could say that y equals my amplitude 
is a, so if you positive or negative 3, I'm going to try 3 for a moment, times the cosine of, well, the next number we often refer to as b, so I'll call it b, b equals 2 pi over the period. So 2 pi over 60 in this case, which is just pi over 30. So this is going to be the b value, which is typically written as 2 pi over uh, the period. And then parentheses again, times x. And then with your phase shift, a shift it's shifting. The next number I'm going to put in here inside the parentheses, that's my phase shift. It's going to shift our wave to the right from here to here. How far? Just focus at any point. I'm going to focus on this point, which is at 0. It's easiest to read. It goes over 20 to the right. So we subtract 20 to make that phase shift happen, right? Because here, on minus 20, that will now that will pull the wave, essentially shift it 20 to the right. And then and now it's getting here. Let me clear this off. So and then finally we have our midline, which is at zero. So there's nothing else to write. Okay, this is our function now. Um, I think it should work. We'll test it out in a moment. But in their notation, it would look like this. 3 times the cosine of pi over 30, and then x minus 20. Okay, so let's try that out in Desmos. I think that's pretty helpful. So in Desmos, I'm not going to be using their notation. We're using f of x equals 3 cosine of, uh, what was it, pi over 30, so slash 30. To get pi, you just type pi, and then x minus 20. And I think this will do it. Let's test it. Here we have negative 10, negative 3, and positive 23. That works. That fits our function right there. Then at 50, it's back at a minimum again. Now, you could have modeled this any way you want. I thought, I think for me, I feel like a sine wave is more work because, uh, although it could be wrong, the sine wave, uh, you'd have to figure out well, if the period, the sine wave, I'm thinking, is from, say, here to uh, here, for example. You have to figure out these points at zero and shift those around. It's not that much more work, but that's the way I would do it with a sine wave. But maybe there's an easier way that I'm not thinking of using a sine wave. Um, it could be maybe based on these points here. But a sine wave is just a cosine wave out of phase, essentially, by 90 degrees. So you can always find a way to do it. Um, so I hope that helped. Uh, there's a lot to unpack in this problem, but take it slow and with the sketch, uh, take your time and make a choice. Sine, cosine, what's the period, midline, amplitude, and then work from there. Alright, I hope this helped.